All right, welcome back to the show. So I already told you earlier that our banter topic for today is African and European delicacies. Basically, we'll be talking about, you know, good food presentation and management. And with me to discuss this is Andrea Kamara Domba. I hope I got that right. You did, you did, you did, you did. How are you, Andrea? I'm well, I'm well. You look very beautiful, by the way. Thank you. Thank I already you told you, well. your footwear is not leaving. <laughs> I will leave it, no worries. Okay, thank you. So tell me, basically, before we start, who is Andrea? Um, Andrea is a serial entrepreneur who has figured out that her passion is food. Okay. And I've luckily been able to figure out how to turn that passion into a profit. Okay. So that's that's who I am in a nutshell. Okay, so for how long have you been doing this? Um, it's been about, without telling my age, um, about 15 years now oh, wow. that I've been Great. doing food. Okay, so looking at African and European delicacies, basically, okay. it, 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 of course, there would be differences. Right. But if you are to speak without you being African right now, mm -hmm. which would you... What are the common things you feel differ between both continents, their delicacies, being a good food advocate that you are? Um, European food, uh, well, let me just start with African food. We cook our food till it's done. I mean, we cook it down. I think that is the biggest uh, difference between European and, and African food. Um, one meal that can take a European 20 minutes to make will take an African three hours to make, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I think we do a lot of um, cooking as far as like using fire and stuff like that. There's a lot, a long process. And then we also use um, a lot of oils in our food, which may not necessarily be the most healthy, but okay. um, we use quite a bit of oil. Okay, in food, so, so in, in, in your place as a cook, because yeah, I remember reading that you come from a house of cooks. Yes, How yes, true yes. is that? Very true, I mean, from Every woman in my family can cook. Even me now that I'm, I'm older now, everyone's like, you, you, you better know how to cook, you know, coming from the line of cooks you do. So everybody cooks. Okay, Grandmother, so, mother, everyone. Okay, so you mentioned that the amount of oil and, you know, uh, style of preparation for African mm -hmm. and European food differ. But now, when you're, for example, catering for an African audience, mm -hmm. what are the common... Uh, things they require or desire when they, you know, take up your services? Um, for an African event, jollof rice is, is a staple. I mean, in this part of Africa anyways, okay. um, in West Africa, no matter what it is, a baby shower, a wedding, a, a church function, a funeral, jollof rice must be there, you okay. know? Um, but again, it depends on where you are too. Um, I'm originally from Liberia, so the foods are a little bit different in Liberia. Uh, we don't eat as much swallow there as you guys eat here, um, but the stews are almost the same, you know? So, for instance, um, you guys eat banga soup, we call it palm butter. You guys um, have a wedu or vegetable or something like that, we have different ones. We have potato greens, collard greens, cassava leaves. So it's almost the same thing, almost prepared the same way, but they have different names. Okay, so, so does the same thing apply when you have to cater for a European audience, for example? Um, no, because the European audience, they're very diverse in their palates. Um, so for a European event, depending on the, the host or whoever is hiring, the palate could be very different. It could be, you know, very Southern or very Italian influenced, or it depends. Whereas Africans, we want what we want. We like our food. We don't want all of this, you know, extra, you know, stuff on, on the plate. They want their rice. They want their soup. And, and that's it. Okay, so I'm very glad you just mentioned Italy. Mm -hmm. Now, I know that Italians love to cook Yes, they food. do. Yes, they do. Like they you do, just said, do. Africans cook till it's done, done. Yeah. And I know the same thing applies to countries like uh, Georgia, mm -hmm. Italy. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. love to cook like that. So yeah. won't you say that there are similarities when it comes to preparation? And also, what is presentation like over there in some of these countries I right. mentioned? And then our own style of presentation. So, um, like you mentioned, Italians love to cook. Um, when I said that they cook, like, foods down, I mean, if we're cooking, um, what's a vegetable here that you guys cook? Um, Eddie Kaikon, Eddie Kong, Kong. Do, Those yes. things, they will cook that green until it's black, you know? <laughs> um, which is wonderful. It tastes, that's what makes African food the way it is. You know, but that same 
uh, you know, plant or, or, or vegetable would spend 10 minutes in an Italian pot, you know? So let's call it half done. Ha exactly. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> half done. Um, but they're very big with presentation, though, you know, you know, um, garnish is something that a lot of times Africans don't pay attention to. We just want the food, you know. Um, but you eat with your eyes before you actually eat with your mouth. So mm. I think it's important to make sure that there's some level of garnish. It may, doesn't need to be too much, but I think it's important to make the plate look pretty. Yeah. Okay, it's yeah. nice because I actually see people making um, uh, barroses these days. I actually <laughs> went somewhere and I was served by Nigusa, the media by the rose. Mm. And I was like, my brother, this is a waste of time. Exactly. I'm still going to roll it. <laughs> I'm still swallowing. So what was the point? Exactly. So I, I exactly. don't think, I think for us is the ceremony sometimes is just too much. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. bring the food up and let's eat. Exactly. So now, nutritional value right. for food right. in Africa. People have said from all the times, um, we used to eat healthier mm -hmm. than now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What has changed? We still eat the same soups. Um, well, I can't say for sure because I'm not a nutritionist, but I, like I mentioned before, um, if we were to cook a vegetable, we cook it so long that it cooks all the nutritional value out of it. You mm. know, So when you eat it half done, there's still some value in it nutritionally, but I think once you cook it down, you douse it in oil, and you fry it on top of that, the, the value there is pretty much gone mm. at that point. Um, but mm. I think, honestly, what has changed is the amount of processed foods we consume now. Um, back then, there was nothing like going to the supermarket to buy a goosey or buy palm butter or whatever in a can. Now you can. But in order for it to stay in that bag, there's preservatives in it, there's all types of chemicals. Even the way they grow things now has you know, definitely changed. Um, yeah, okay. so um, those things, I think, add to what makes it unhealthy. Like you said, it's the same food, but it's just the way in which it's prepared, the way it's processed, and the way it's you know, um, grown that, okay. that, that makes it more. So now let's go to you. OK. Andrea, <laughs> um, what was your first catering experience? The first okay. ever catering experience you had doing the job all by yourself. What was it like? So my first experience, I didn't do it by myself. I was, so I started working at 14 and I was working in a banquet hall. <laughs> Excuse me, Nigerian youth, 14 years. I was 14. Okay. I, you know, I wanted a pair of sneakers one day and my mom came home with the application. She said, they're hiring, go and find a job. So I would work on the weekends for people's weddings and stuff. So I got to see firsthand how- Was this in Liberia or Nigeria? No, this was actually in the US. Okay. This is in the U.S. Um, and the banquet hall, like I said, would have events every Friday and Saturday, and I would work mm. them. So I got to see how an event is supposed to run. I got to see how the food is prepared. I got to see the, you know, the behind-the-scenes stuff. Mm. Um, and then fast forward, you know, several years later, um, my mom opened her own catering company, and so I would literally help her do everything from the actual cooking to the run of show. And it's not an easy task at all. <laughs> My mom is a caterer too, so I know what you're talking exactly. about. Exactly. <laughs> it's not easy. It's okay. not easy at all. Yeah. So basically you did it with your mom's help? So at the, at the first time, when I moved away from that and started my own company, um, I think the first one I did was actually recently, um, about two and a half years ago, without anybody. It was on my own. Because everything I would do, because my mom's, even though I cook very well, I can never cook past my mom. So whatever job I get, I always, you know, subcontract my mother to do the actual cooking. Um, the first one I did on my own was, it was a lot harder than I, than I realized. Um, I definitely was understaffed because I felt like, oh, no, mm. I've done this a million times. I can do this. I can do that. But I'm one person. You know, I can't do everything. So it was definitely a learning experience. And the food came out good? It came out good. Uh, it probably was a little late, but it came out good. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I won't toot my own horn, but I, I can, I can steam <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> okay, so tell me, leading from that, um, what's your most embarrassing cooking moment? Ooh. Um, now, when I say cooking moment, please let me paint a scenario so you don't play it down. Okay. <laughs> I, I, a friend of mine was, was once asked to miss, make a goosey. No, I think she was asked to make obono, and she okay. was dicing tomatoes to make obono soup. Oh. And Oh. By the time we were done eating the album, oh. I did not go to class the next day. So oh, wow. Now, <laughs> now okay. when I say your most embarrassing cooking moment or experience, mm. I mean, please be truthful. Okay, okay. Yes. So I will use one that happened here in Nigeria. Um, I, it was my boss's birthday. 
Okay. So um, I said, I'm going to cook. I'm going to invite everybody over. All my you know, colleagues and my boss came, his wife came, and they wanted Nigerian food because they know I cook, but I cook mostly you know, continental foods. So I said, no, I'm going to cook igusi because that was his favorite, his favorite soup. So I went to the market, bought everything, and I cooked the food. Um, and I thought it tasted good, but I didn't wash the, um, the leaves very well. So there was sand. <laughs> there was sand in the, in the igusi, and everybody took one bite, and they were like, mm, yeah, let's go out to eat. And we ended up having to go out to eat. How did you feel about that? I was embarrassed. <laughs> I was very, especially after I made so much mouth that the food was going to taste this way and that way. But, um, you know, I learned now that you must wash and then wash and then yes, wash again. you have to wash. <laughs> Keep washing. Yeah. Okay, so basically for anybody who wants to go into your line of business, mm. um, qualification-wise, what do they have to do? For me, I don't have any certificate or degree in, in, in you know, culinary um, arts at all. Um, but you have to have experience. I mean, like I said, I've been in the kitchen from childhood. Um, my first job, I was paying attention and watching. So I think if you can find a way to get experience, um, I think it's far more valuable than, uh, you know, a traditional mm. going to school and getting a degree for it. Um, and then just trying, like you just, for me, I, cooking is a hobby to me. So I'm always on YouTube or looking at new recipes or reading, you know, different magazines and trying stuff out. And it's almost like a science experiment for me. You know, I just throw stuff. I'm like, okay, I have this, I have this. What can I make? And then, you know, something magical always happens. Okay, so aside <laughs> culinary art, I know that you are into um, other things like tech. Uh, yes. Yes, yes, you yes. You do that yes. too. So, so I'm so. actually, so I have a, my newest venture, apart from the restaurants that I own now, um, I am looking to bring a healthy meal plan subscription delivery service, if you will, mm. to, to Lagos. And I want to use tech to do that. Nice. So I'm in the process of building an app. I am working with developers trying to, you know, find ways to make sure, without giving too much away, uh, we change the way Africans think about healthy food. Because when you think of healthy food, a lot of times you think, oh, I have to go and eat grass. <laughs> no. <laughs> you can eat good food. You can yeah. eat well-seasoned food. Um, you can even eat all these foods that people claim are bad for you. Everything must be done in moderation. And I, I subscribe mm -hmm. to the school of thought that if you eat within moderation and you um, control your portion sizes, you can, you can eat what you want. I mean, you cannot eat a mountain of rice and then expect to lose weight. I mean, mm -hmm. it doesn't work like that. You can still have the rice, but make sure you balance it with fruits and vegetables and, you know, prepare it in the right way. Okay, so still talking about the tech part of you. Uh, are there other things that are in store for Africans concerning this? Yeah. Um, Besides the new app coming up. Right. So um, I think there's a, there's a wave of, there's a food culture here, and especially in, in Nigeria. You know, Nigeria is a hub, if you will. Um, it's a melting pot. And I think that um, there's a lot of great stuff happening on the scene. I mean, they, there's chefs popping up every day with pop-ups and things like that. And I want to help bring all of those, tie all those things together in events. I'm an events mm. person. Mm. So, um, you know, festivals and pop-up dinners and things that get people, you know, abreast with all the different types of food that are happening here. Okay. So do you train people now? Do you train? Um, I did. Okay. Currently I'm not, um, but I did actually uh, have a stint in training before I even opened the restaurant. Um, I was, funny enough, I was staying in a hotel in Abuja and the service was just horrible. I mean, the, I won't call the name. They've done a lot better over the years. But um, the, I complained, and the owner was like, well, can you train my staff? And I ended up staying. I trained the staff, and he had four locations. I trained all of them. So from there, it kind of spiraled. So I used to do it. Um, I mean, I guess there's something I can always explore, but, you know, it's, it's quite um, tasking. Mm. It's quite tasking because the, 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 the um, culture of customer service isn't really here. Yeah. In Africa, it's, it's hard to get people to smile when they're doing, you know, I, and you, you'd be surprised how much just smiling will make almost anything better. The food can be nasty. The food can come late. But if you, pre you know, prepare it and present it with a smile, people will forget, okay, well, it wasn't that bad. She was, you know, she was a nice person, you know? So um, getting people to understand that customer service is just as important as food presentation mm. is just as important as, you know, time management and things like that when it comes to food, um, it's, it's been a struggle.
Mm. Just finish that off. Okay, everyone. That was Andrea Kamara Domba. And I'm so glad that you actually came on Hello Nigeria today I'm, I'm to well. share all of this with us. By the way, how can people follow you? Okay, so um, on my Instagram, uh, it's akamara.dunbar. So it's A K A M A R A dot Dunbar. Um, you can also follow my healthy food uh, company. It's called The Balance Bowl. So if you look on Instagram, T H E Balance Bowl, you will find me there. All right, everyone. The to enjoy more of this, our Ogunke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page.